Hi, I'm Femi O.K. I'm Malika Bilal and you're in the stream. Today, blackface controversies. We will discuss the history of this racist practice and how it impacts people of colour. Are there instances of blackface in your part of the world? Chances are yes. Well, what should we do about them? Tell us via Twitter or in our live YouTube chat. Just want to let you know this before we get started, that today's program will feature racist images that you may find disturbing. The latest controversy over blackface involves Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Last week, he apologised for instances in his past where he darkened his skin to portray black and brown people. The controversy has reignited conversations about racism and white privilege. This is something uh, that uh, I deeply, deeply regret. Uh, darkening your face, uh, regardless of the context or the circumstances, is always unacceptable because of the racist history of blackface. I should have understood that then, uh, and I never should have done it. Blackface isn't just a painful episode of the past. It continues to appear in popular culture and media around the world. Blackface characters in Europe include Black Pete in the Netherlands and Belgium's Le Sauvage have sparked protests from anti-racism activists and raised questions over how these traditions impact their respective communities of colour. So today we want to dive into the racist roots of blackface. And with us to talk about this in Montreal, Canada, Charmaine Nelson, a professor of art history at McGill University. She's also a scholar of transatlantic slavery studies. In Amsterdam, Jerry Afrié. He's a poet and human rights activist who works with the Black Pete is Racism campaign. And in New York, Leela Day. She's a radio producer and host of The Stoop, Stories from the Black Diaspora. Welcome, everyone. Hello, everybody. It's really good to have Hello. you here. Hello, Jerry, Charmaine, and Leela. Let me start here on my laptop. It takes us back to the beginning of the 19th century. William H. West's big minstrel jubilee. Four gentlemen there. None of them are black, all wearing blackface. Charmaine, 2019, we're still discovering blackface um, mm -hmm. uh, pictures, photographs, and not from way back. They're not even historical mm -hmm. archives. People are still doing it. If mm -hmm. they knew where this tradition came from, do you think they would stop? I think many of them would. And I think, too, there's a very unique context in Canada where we have suppressed 200 years of transatlantic slavery under two empires, the French and the British. And uh, why that's very, very important for us to understand is connected to uh, Trudeau's uh, scandal with brownface and blackface is because blackface minstrelsy comes directly out of transatlantic slavery and it emerges at a moment when slavery is ending so we need to think about what replaces the white ownership of black bodies when slavery dies and minstrelsy was a uh, public stage performance that included instrumental music singing dancing and very violent comedy they would sing and make jokes about things like lynching, right? Smoking like tobacco, peeling up like potatoes, black people. And on the stage were mainly white men who were doing cross, uh, cross gender and cross racial performances. So white men pretending to be both black, male and females um, uh, who were enslaved. So part of why it was so horrific and horrible to us then and today is that a minstrelsy was about a nostalgia that slavery had ended. It was oh so sad that slavery is over, right? And the grotesqueness, too, of the mask, of course, was a part of that, an essential part of that. So that was a perfect explanation wrapped up so so tightly there. Thank you for that. And I think mm -hmm. it, it's necessary because there are people in our community tweeting us that they don't quite understand where it came from and why it right. is so bad. So I want to mm -hmm. bring in one voice. This is Amen. He says, I'm a bit confused, I suppose. If it's part of a costume for a theme thing, then why is it offensive? I mean, actors such as the Wayans brothers here in the U.S. dressed up in white face to play the characters in the White Chicks movie. Amen goes on to say, so someone can paint their body blue or green or purple, but if you match your skin tone to portray the character or costume to be more real, then it's offensive. So, Leela, I'll give this one to you. What would you say back to Amen? Well, it just, it makes me think about when people are doing blackface and they are in situations where they are most likely the only, uh, there aren't any other black people in the room, right? 
And so the idea of when someone says, why is it offensive? It's, it has to do for me with this question of like, if you are, were a white person in a room full of black people, would you still be doing blackface? Um, mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't think, I think the answer is no. I'm, I mean, people do blackface because they are trying to be funny. Uh, and and at, at some point, it's just, it's just, it's not humorous. Um, so I think that, that when people say, I don't get it, you know, we can all laugh at this. Yeah. I think the sad thing is, it's, it's basically people that are in spaces where there aren't any black people around that are basically poking fun at, at black culture. And that's a question I think people need to ask when when they're questioning why this might be offensive to other people. Can I add as well, can I jump in there, Leela, and add as well that, you know, there's no equivalence between black people pretending to be white and white pr people depending, pretending to be people color who they've colonized and enslaved. And in the case of, of black people uh, of African descent, we're talking 400 years of slavery from the 1400s until the 1800s. So what we have to understand too is race as we know it today as a supposedly biological category of human difference did not exist before slavery. Mm. It was created in and through slavery to justify slavery. And uh, when you know a lot of visual artists participated in that project, and when they were creating the dioramas of people's skull sizes and shapes and, and all of this kind of nonsense uh, with a biometric kind of understandings of the body, you know, the black person was always at the bottom and the white, the European, was always at the top. So we need to understand, too, that racism about, is about power, the ability to withhold things from people, to, to deny people opportunity, and to be able to misrepresent people as well. We really need to keep that in mind um, in terms of you know, people who try to reverse the argument about mm. uh, uh, what, 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 you know, oh, you're dressing like up. You're dressing up as us. Why can't we dress up as you? Let me right. let me bring Jerry into the conversation here, Jerry, because every single year, without fail, towards the end of the year, people around the world are shocked to see Dutch people blacking up uh, with the full big lips and the and a Afro wig. Let me show you here what that looks like. There is a character known as Zwarte Piet or Black Piet in Netherlands culture as you approach Christmas time. He is uh, the helper for Santa Claus. That's how I would describe it. But Jerry, you tell us how you would describe this image uh, that you see and it's culturally acceptable and it's part of a tradition that you are trying to fight and get rid of. Tell us about Black Pete. Well, uh, where should I start? <laughs> I would say that uh, when we look at the tradition uh, we had the, uh, of uh, St. Nicholas. Um, it was hundreds of years, you know, which was played by whites. And then during transatlantic slavery, um, uh, the white Santa Claus were uh, portrayed uh, who was elderly white man. And all of a sudden he arrives by steamboat and rides a white horse through parades across the Netherlands. And as a result, the Swat Pete, who pays visits to schools, hospitals, and other places, what we are seeing is that uh, it's kind of uh, leave the impression that black people are lazy, that black people are not unequal. And, but most shockingly, it only shows that we haven't really learned much from mm. our slave, uh, slave history and colonial history. And it's kind of like a dressed up, but it's a definitely black face and a lot of people are turning a blind eye to it. And mm. when we started our campaign, we didn't have a lot of people, uh, we didn't have a lot of support, support from the, a lot of uh, people. But recently we have seen more white people coming to the conclusion that this is actually very racist. And we hope that it continues so until we get rid of racism. Mm. So, Jerry, I'm reminded, uh, I, I've been here for a long time at this stream, and so I'm pulling up an episode from 2012 in which a member of your organization was on the show. Uh, we talked about blackface for the holidays, and this is the latest update to that. So fast forward. That was 2012. This is 2019. This is from The Guardian on what the updated version of Zwarte Pete is going to look like. He is Sudi now. So we asked our community what they think about that update to his origin story. This is what one person said. Jeremiah says, I am still offended. Use darkened faces instead. White people parading in Sudi faces, darkened faces, or any other adjectives we can come up with still boils down to whites using black identity as their amusement. So Jerry, what's your take on the 
Sudi P, the update to it, and, and trying to uh, remedy some of what people see as racism. Can I show the two, the change? <laughs> Back and forth, Can I do yes. the before and after? So mm -hmm. this is the before on my laptop, everybody. So this is Black Pete. This is the updated version. It's a little bit yeah. black. Not very black there, Jerry. Are you happy now? No. <laughs> uh, the thing is that when uh, I was part of this campaign, when we started it, I didn't start this campaign because I was bored. I didn't start it because I was looking for a new habit. I started it because there was blackface, which is very degrading to uh, black people, and I felt like we need to do something about it. So my whole uh, goal is to get rid of the blackface part so that the celebration can become a celebration for everyone. Also, making that changes, even though it seems small, mm -hmm. I do think that a lot of children growing up with Swati Pete will stop pointing the finger at black people and saying, you are Pete. Because now they are seeing the parents can be Pete. They are seeing the people behind that is it, more playful. So it's about people not uh, having a celebration at the expense of black people. But at the same time, I'm not to tell people how to celebrate their celebration because I'm a poet. I'm, I'm trying to be free-minded as I can. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I will not stand by when it's at the expense of whether it's black people or white people or any other uh, human race. So, Lila, Can I say too that yes, Jerry's Shana, point is, sorry, is really important too yeah. in the Trudeau case because Jerry's point is about the children and what children are taught and at what age, at what age when we're thinking about white children learning practice racism. Um, Trudeau was a teacher. He was 29 years old. He should have been the one in the school making sure that his students didn't come to that party in blackface as opposed to being the one to show up in the blackface. And we're talking about a 21st century uh, occurrence. It was 2001. And we have to remember here, too, this is a background that people like to forget. You know, growing up in, in Canada, maybe the, uh, you know, people in Europe, et cetera, don't know this, but we are inundated with American TV. So, uh, you know, I grew up watching NBC, ABC, you know, Fox when it came into being CBS. So um, as well as the Canadian TV show, as Canadian channels, sorry, TV channels. So why I'm saying this, growing up, uh, you know, being born in the 70s, growing up in the 70s, there was a moment when I would turn on the TV and see the the big blockbuster blockbuster splashy hollywood movies with actresses like julie garland in blackface but then by the 80s late 70s you know there was a mainstream consensus that we didn't want to see that anymore on tv what and happened? all those movies Sh got me, sense. what do you think happened because now well, I, we're having a conversation because mm -hmm. it is unacceptable so what right. happened what 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 changed our minds i think part of it is listen it went underground so oh. So a lot of these cases of white people coming out post-censorship, post-mainstream censorship, is white people in white-only situations. I think Leela mentioned this a little bit, right? When there's not black people around, there's not people of color around. And if they are honest with themselves, some of them would admit, I wouldn't have done this if my black friend had been yeah. there or my black coworker, et cetera. So part of it is we need to think about, you know, in a country like Canada that builds itself on multiculturalism and racial diversity and inclusion, are we actually living together in Canada? Right? Are we actually b building intimate friendships across race and ethnicity? Are we actually, you know, eating lunch and going to the barbecue with, you know, the 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 workmate who, you know, is of a different race or ethnicity? Because a lot of the instances that are being, you know, talked about now, like there was a a, a white female who was a, a law student in Alberta in the 1970s, saying their whole law faculty showed up in blackface at, at a certain gathering, and, and and what was interesting to me is she said. Nobody complained, nobody minded, everybody liked it. But my first thought was, hello, how many black students were at your law school in 1970 in Alberta? Probably none, probably no black professors either. And probably the black people who are in the, um, you know, the institutional system, I'm sorry to say, but Canada is a racist country. Uh -huh. They were probably people who didn't have the positions or the authority to think that they could point out that they were deeply offended by that party, which they saw. Mm. So, I think it's interesting uh, if I may ask something. <laughs> so I, I, I love that this is sparking. Everyone wants to say something. I'm going to jump in there because I want to bring something in from our community. We got so many comments from them. And it's picking up on something that you mentioned earlier, Charmaine, about people thinking that this was 
exported, and it was exported from the U.S. from Hollywood, and so that is how it infiltrated. Um, but we have a comment from someone, and I pulled up a tweet that she sent, uh, and she talks about Europe. And so because this was imported from the U.S., people think we don't have the same issues as the U.S. does, and so therefore we don't have the same problems. She writes, this is how France chose to represent the 1794 abolition of slavery on the walls of its National Assembly. It tells you all that you need to know about the country's attitude towards blackface. Now, she sent us a comment elaborating on this. Have a listen to what she said. So one of the problems that we have in Europe is the constant distanciation with blackface seen as an activity imported from 19th century Jim Crow America, forgetting that the practice had European roots. I'm not talking here about the a medieval carnival, but truly of the racist practice of disguising oneself as a black or more in order to mock or belittle the other. I give a quick example. Since 1991, the fresco of the French National Assembly celebrates the 1794 abolition of slavery. The work by French artist Hervé de Rosa is a full-blown blackface. Yet with an attempt to have it displayed from the National Assembly, failed, as a majority of French refused to see any harm in the artwork and denounced an attack on freedom of expression, a dictatorship of minorities, and an assault of Frenchness by American political correctness. So, Jerry, she told us that people deny its roots because they think, well, it doesn't relate to our history. This is just enjoyment. This is just fun. Uh, you mean uh, white people or black people? <laughs> I think that she meant white people in Europe. Uh, I think that what we are seeing is that, uh, especially in the Netherlands, we have to uh, remember that uh, most Dutch people grew up with Swatati and they have fond memories about it. But since the history of colonialism and slavery is not being addressed enough at schools, a lot of people grow up thinking it is a friendly, harmless tradition and they have no, uh, some people have no idea about the hatred behind it. And uh, mm -hmm. I think also that, uh, that you have straight up racist people who don't care whether it uh, hurts people or not, but you have a lot of ignorant people. And uh, what we're trying to do in the Netherlands is besides protesting is to uh, educate the people since the government won't do it and since the schools uh, refuse to do it. Mm -hmm. We uh, just uh, common people are now uh, have to step to the plate to teach one another so it won't happen and, again. Can I just jump in really also, quickly to that? Coming, let, let me bring in Leela because Leela's been dying to say something okay, for, sorry, for some time. Leela, go, go ahead. Sorry, Leela. Go ahead. I'm just saying, like, just personally, it's also extremely exhausting, Jerry, you know what I mean, to have to try to constantly educate people about why this is offensive. It's mm -hmm. it just it's really, really draining. And I think that's a conversation we've been having a lot um, amongst people within the diaspora. There's some people that say, well, one way to not be drained about this is just to laugh it off. I have black friends that have seen blackface and the gollywag dolls and things that are very racially offensive tell me, I don't let that, that sort of thing bother me. You know, once it, I let it bother me and I internalize this, that's when I think that they've won. And so I think, like, for me personally and for a lot of uh, folks I've been talking to, I... It, it's become more of like a cancel culture towards this type of behavior yeah. where someone can dress in blackface and be completely canceled from either being reelected or being, you know, given certain job opportunities, et cetera. Whereas before it used to be a time where, well, let's talk this out and let's educate people and let's try to explain to them. So I'm, I'm you know, I think people are just I, really fed up. I, I do can understand I just say you, though, so Jerry... and I think we are tired. I, I do mm -hmm. understand you and I think we are really tired of explaining uh, because I do think that when it comes to dehumanization, it wasn't that Africans who were enslaved who were dehumanized. I think the whites who enslaved them were dehumanized because they become no longer people by doing such mm -hmm. things to people. But at the same time, I do think that um, I have seen it. I've experienced it for people really changing uh, their views based on uh, having those conversations, but I do agree that it's exhausting and we shouldn't be the one to do it. All right, you know, guess, we are not even guess, I, I just... guess, I know you're yeah. exhausted, but I want to do something very quickly with you. And I'm going to call this the speed round. This is CTV and this is the apology that Justin Trudeau made. And then underneath it are some questions from people who clearly don't understand the history of blackface, or maybe they do and it doesn't really impact them. So this is a speed round for you all. Alexandra says, it was 18 years ago, it was a lack of judgment. Leah, comment on that. Lack of judgment. It wasn't really his fault. 
Um, I, my comment is basically, you know, he can easily be canceled for his actions. Like there's, there's not much empathy left for people that do these things and, and basically try to hide them. It would have even been better if he had actually come out and said, I, this is something that I did. And you know, this is how I feel about it. But OK, speed round moving on. Smita Krish says it was in 2001 when no one thought it was an issue and it wasn't a crime. Charmaine, you handle that one. Okay, listen, I got to say that for everybody, and I know you don't, you wouldn't understand this, but Quebec and Canada are a very different situation. He might not get cancelled. And part of that is because Canadians, the average white Canadian does not know the colonial history of the nation, does not know that slavery happened here. Instead, we, we enshrine the 30-year window of the Underground Railroad when African Americans were fleeing north. So part of it, especially in Quebec, this is being dismissed completely dismissed mm. by white uh, francophones. No so we deal. need to understand that yeah, history yeah. too, because they like to talk about British conquest in 1760. They don't like to talk about what from the French empire at home in Canada did to indigenous people and black people. So there's a different context here. He might get reelected. Okay, one more for you, yeah. Jerry. And this one comes from Colette. Again, it's under the apology that Justin Trudeau made. The first apology. There was a second one. Colette says this is a smear campaign against Trudeau. We have all dressed up at Halloween or theme parties. It's never in a racist spirit. Instead, dressing up to be someone else and celebrate being different. Dressing up, we're celebrating your culture and your ethnicity. Jerry, you take that on very briefly. Hallo hallelujah. White privilege speaking. Okay. First of all, we have to understand whether he did it 30 years ago or not, uh -huh. you know, at the moment he did it, he hurt some people. And I do think that he got caught not once, not twice, but three times. Why didn't he admit it up front like, okay, I was stupid, I was doing these things. Because in the Netherlands, a lot of people are now expressing that they wish to celebrate it. Uh, 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 they wish to black up as blackface. Now they won't do it anymore because they think it's offensive. But they didn't get caught before they made that apology. So I do think that for someone to be in such a position, he should know better. And he changed his Facebook, I think his Twitter profile, to with a black uh, person next to him. And I was like, oh, so now you're trying to tell us you have black friends? Something is wrong, you know. So I think if it was anti-Semitic behavior, it, so why should we be put up with it was fun and everyone is doing it? No, I don't think everyone is doing it. I think there are people doing it who should know better. And he should have known better and he should have come forward with it way earlier than to be caught up in this situation. Mm, Jerry, mincing no words there. Uh, appreciate it. So I want to bring in one more uh, commenter who's also mincing no words. And uh, he is the author of a forthcoming book, Exporting Jim Crow, Blackface Minstrelsy in South Africa and Beyond. So really just expanding this conversation because it really does touch so many places of the world. Here's what Chinua Thalwe had to say. The racist comedy of blackface minstrel shows portrayed black people as incompetent slaves who were supposedly unfit for democratic participation in a white nation. The minstrel shows that were exported to South Africa provided a forum for the British settlers to celebrate their belief in racial superiority. The minstrel shows included music, dance, and comedy sketches. They had more entertainment value than the pro-slavery lectures of the 19th century. And this entertainment value is probably why blackface continues today. Some people still believe that it is fun to put on blackface makeup and perform outlandish caricatures of people of color. So, Charmaine, we've heard a lot of history. We've heard a lot of whys. Halloween is mm -hmm. coming up. What is oh your boy. advice for people moving forward? After this show, what do you want the takeaway to be? Okay, and I just want to say really quickly, I don't want people to get the misperception that like, blackface minstrelsy also took place in Canada in the 19th century, right? The same stage performances happened in Canada. But I also want to mention that we still we also got the TV and the mm. cinema in Canada too mm. in the 20th century. So I mean, we but, have yeah, one minute but, left. Halloween is coming up. Uh, black Pete is coming up it. in the Netherlands. What would you advise people to do? When is it I'm appropriate sorry. to wear yeah. blackface? I, I think it's never appropriate. It's never appropriate. Other people's cultures, other people's races are not costumes. We are not object to be put on and taken off. Please stop doing this. All right. I, I think everybody is pretty much unanimous on that point. Thank you, Leela. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Charmaine, as well. And I should just say that Jerry has a campaign. His idea is to get rid of Black Pete, which is a very traditional character in the Netherlands. Have a look here. He has a petition. You can find it on his Twitter page. And you can, if you agree with him, you can sign it and maybe change the tradition of blacking up for Christmas time 
in the Netherlands. Thank you guests for your uh, contribution. We really appreciate it. That's all the time we have now. Thanks for watching online. See you next time.